Hey everybody, this is Andy with Lowlight Virtual. Earlier this year, we were lucky enough to receive an Epic Mega Grant for our virtual production software, Reality Field. If you've never heard of it before, Reality Field is a software utility for connecting camera, lens, and tracking data together. It's a quick and easy way to connect all the data sources of your VP Studio together, conform them, and send them where they need to go. I want to walk you through this new version of Reality Field and show you how we can make your virtual production setup faster and easier. First, you'll need to download the software. Head on over to realityfield.xyz and download it from Gumroad. There's a fully featured trial, as well as two versions you can purchase. The Cine version costs more, but adds support for more professional systems like OptiTrack and Arri Alexa cameras. Once you open the software, you'll be prompted for your key, which you'll have received automatically if you purchase the software. If you don't have a key, you can hit OK and the trial will begin. And here you can see the new user interface with Reality Field 2023. We put more of an emphasis on informing the user what's going on in the background, and you'll receive not notifications and uh, message logs as things occur in the software. Let's quickly go over the UI. On the left here, we have the tracker input section where you can connect to various different types of camera tracking solutions. Um, some of these you'll have to enter manually, and some of them, will, like OptiTrack, will auto-populate. And up here, you can also specify if you want to use anti-latency or Vive trackers. In the settings menu, you can make all sorts of tweaks to the stage itself. You can change the colors, you can change the scale. Now you can, you can change the network interface IP, enter your license info, set units for everything, and more. The cameras pane allows you to connect to various cinema cameras and pull the data right off of the cameras. The data pane down here is simply a list of data sources and you can click and select on multiple of them. Over here is the sync menu. You can pull time code from various different data sources and use that to clock and sync the output. You can also record raw LONAT2 data to a file here that is time code referenced. At the top here in the output pane, you can specify the output rate, and this will automatically be set if you uh, enable a sync source. You can output through Live Link to Unreal, FreeD, OSC, or it can communicate also with directly with Pixera. So let's uh, go ahead and set up a little demo scene here as an example. I have a um, retracker connected right now, um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to retracker. I'm going to hit connect, and that should connect right up. And here I can see that I have my retracker moving around here. If I click the tracker itself, as in the little uh, uh, box here, I'll get the tracker data menu. And this has a lot more information now than it used to. We can specify the an offset, both the tracker to floor offset, as well as just a local offset in position and rotation. We can pause the tracking. We can specify axis mapping and inversion here. Uh, we can now also specify a manual data delay and this is a per uh, tracker setting. We can also say if we want to delay the uh, camera data or the timecode data that's associated with this tracker. Um, this is the same as the previous version, but we can actually use a uh, filter here. So if we click Analyze, it'll collect some sample points. We can see that there's a, a sort of a jitter around uh, two hertz here. I can set two hertz. Um, if you control click on any of the number values, you can actually just manually type them in and hit Enter. Um, and then I can refresh this, and now uh, we'll have smoothed out some of the jitter that's inherent in you know, any tracking system there. I'm going to uncheck that. You'll see that it kind of starts bouncing around again. Um, we can also here manually specify uh, camera and lens data. So if I connect a camera here, and I have the um, Airy uh, UMC slash Alexa 35 emulator running, actually. So I can connect to that. It's going to connect to that. You can see we've connected. I can now specify that I want to use the UMC uh, data here. And if I actually go into the top here and click on values, I can say, uh, I could show under camera data that it shows that we're controlling the camera data of this tracker with the UMC, as well as the values. Um, we haven't specified any lens data yet, so I can show you up here. You can also manually type in values if you want. Um, but as soon as you select a, a data source, that of course will get overwritten. And you can also uh, edit your zero point here. Uh, in this case, I also have Lona 2 running, along with an Indie Mark 2 lens encoder. So let's just say, for example, that we want to use the, uh, the focus and the iris data from the camera, but let's say that I want to use an external encoder uh, for the zoom. So in this case, I can go um, UMC focus, I can go uh, UMC iris, and then I'll go ahead and go into Lonet Zoom. And this is, uh, Lonet is uh, just a camera I've named Lonet in Lonet 2. So now as I uh, turn the um, encoder knob here, I'll actually go to Lens Data to show you this, you can see the, zero, the zoom source is Lonet Zoom, and this is from the uh, IndieMark encoder that I have set up here. Actually, I could just show you how I have that set up. 
So this is uh, the interface I'm learning at two here. And then um, the and then the focus and the iris are just being controlled by the uh, Airy um, UMC emulator. So at this point, we're actually done. Um, <laughs> we haven't really had to do anything because this is really about it. Uh, Reality Field knows what these values are. It knows where they can go. And that's really basically all there is to it. So we're already outputting through the default live link port. So I'm gonna hop on over to Unreal and show you how to get set up there. Okay, so here we are in Unreal and I've created a new project based on the in-camera VFX uh, template. Um, when you purchase Reality Field, you will get a link to the Lonet 2 plugin for Unreal 5. So you have to install that in your project. I'm gonna go up to Window, Virtual Production, Live Link, and then I'm just gonna add a Live Link source here. And you'll see a, a few of these here. So um, the Lonet encoders, this is data coming straight from Lonet because it's running on the same network. Um, you could use this separately if you'd like, uh, but obviously Reality Field makes it really easy to use individually. And then we also have Retracker and Retracker Lens. And that is uh, automatically, and that name is automatically populated from Reality Field because we are using a, a Retracker tracking system. It's just gonna come in as Retracker. By the way, if you are using N-Display, make sure you save this as a preset and make this the, the default preset in the project so that it loads on all the nodes when you launch N-Display. So what I'm gonna do is come to uh, the Cine Camera Actor here. We have a Live Link uh, component already. And I'm just going to select Retracker. And, uh, oh my God. So here we have the uh, Cine Camera Actor uh, now automatically being controlled through the Retracker. So immediately one of the things that I can notice is that the uh, movement of the physical tracker isn't lining up correctly with the axes uh, that are coming through in Unreal. So we can fix that. I'm gonna hop back over into Reality Field here. Um, make sure I click the tracker, and then uh, I'm gonna just go into the axis mapping and axis invert menus. And I have to know the settings here for retracker. Uh, in most cases, we try to make these values um, identical to all trackers, but sometimes that's not possible. So you may have to do some trial and error. But once you do make it, you can also save it as a preset here. So I can go ahead and save this. I can name it whatever I want, I'll just name it retracker. And then I can call this up and load this in the future. So now I'll hop back over to Unreal and I can see now that everything is significantly better and is actually mapped correctly. Um, but now I have the tracker moving nicely. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the lens mapping. I'll add a new lens component. Um, I'm gonna make a new lens file and I'm just gonna call this demo lens. It's my favorite lens. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that this is all set up correctly, where you want this camera's camera component. Um, this all seems correct. I'm gonna open up the lens file here. Open this up. You can see the values coming into the bottom now. And of course, you could go through the full Unreal lens distortion system with a checkerboard. Uh, I'm just gonna do a much more basic uh, mapping today, just as an example here. Uh, I'm gonna make sure my encoder is zeroed on the zoom. Uh, I'm gonna go into lens file, focal length, and then we'll just add a new lens data point. I'm gonna manually override the focus here. Well, actually, you know what? I'll show you a better way to do this. So uh, the focus is currently being driven off of a, a metadata emulator for the Airy system, but obviously this is gonna throw off our values. So what I can do here is go back into reality field and I'll just disassociate the focus here. And then I can actually manually set it now. So if I go into the lens values, now that we've uh, decoupled that, I can just manually set my focus to whatever I want. So I'll just set it to 100 if I want. And once this is all set up, you can make changes to all of your cameras in one place here in Reality Field, instead of needing to dive into each uh, camera individually in Unreal, which is uh, pretty cool. So now uh, the iris is still moving, uh, but that's totally fine. And the zoom is coming in with the, the coder that we're actually gonna use. So I can now go ahead and uh, let's just say that this is a value of one millimeter. Uh, I'm gonna twist the encoder a little bit here. I'll add another value and uh, let's say that this is uh, 10 millimeters. Okay, and then let's uh, crank the encoder a little bit more and then let's just say that this is uh, 50 millimeters. There we go. And so now as I move my uh, Indie Mark II encoder, um, we have the uh, values changing. I can save this now and if I close out of this, uh, we can see that the zoom is being affected by the um, encoder, which is awesome. And again, now you can set up, if you have multiple cameras, you can set all of this up in Reality Field. You can even uh, save the stage then, save your project, load it back up at any point. All of this is pre-configured for you and you can just get up and going at the beginning of the day. So it's a very powerful tool. And of course, 
it's not Unreal Engine specific. Because you can output to 3D or to OSC, that opens up pretty much every system you can imagine. You can stream into Disguise, you can even go you can go Pixero directly as well. Um, you can even go into like Blender. There's OSC uh, plugins for Blender, for example. Um, Touch Designer, Notch, everything is usable to you now through Reality Field. And that means that you can connect your red, you know, V-wrap your camera and pass your data straight to Blender, combine that with a Vive Mars, and you are good to go. So it is a very flexible tool. So yeah, that is Reality Field 2023. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Any feature requests, post them in the forum. And uh, have a good shoot.